My dearest friends in Christ, I bless God today. I thank the name of God for a wonderful gift of life and good health. Wherever you are under the influence of my voice, I pray that open door will come in all your good endeavors. I want to chip in a few points about the video that circulated about one or two weeks ago concerning Pope and the gay issue. Yeah, the gay saga. That video was circulating where Pope said that the gay people should be blessed, should be prayed upon. Well, I lost my voice. It was quite unfortunate. For past one month, I have not released any video. But I kept my message. The few points I would have made then, I still have them burning in me. So what am I saying? Pope Francis, who is in charge of the Catholic Church, number one, he is not the first Pope. Number two, Catholic Church is a universal church. Number three, Pope is a servant. He is not the owner of the church. We have only one master as far as the Christendom is concerned. Every other person is a servant, irrespective of your ecclesiastical position. Yes, every other person is a servant. Let us enshrine that at the back of our mind. I could remember yesterday's when we had the, the Pope Benedict XVI, the Emeritus. Yes, his real name is uh, Joseph Rasinga. They knew him then when he was a cardinal as Cardinal No, before he was made a Pope. This issue of gay came up years back, but one thing he was known of was that he would always say no. Anything that is anti-Christ. And he maintained that until he became a Pope. You know, some people in the Western world, they were saying when he was made a Pope that uh, the church needs to, uh, uh, to experience liberalism. You know, people should do what they like. So what they planned in those days, even some priests in the Vatican City, they want the church to be worldly and the world to be churchly. That was my observation. So what am I saying? The Pope made a statement. The statement of a Pope is not above the statement of God. The word of Pope cannot supersede the word of Christ. The word of Christ is the voice of the Father Almighty, the Yahweh Sabaoth. My good friends, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 23, that we should buy the truth and the sell it not. Let us call a spade a spade. We must maintain one standard because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Pope said the priest should bless or pray for the gay people. Number one, what should be the weddings or the content of that prayer? That's number one. Pope spoke like a human being. St. Paul said there are times we talk as human beings. At times, the Spirit of God will speak through us. That message was not divine. That instruction was not divine because anything divine cannot be controversial. When divine instruction is being issued, it arrests every situation, even certain bows. So Pope spoke his mind according to their Western culture. But the word of God maintains one standard. No matter the culture, no matter the race, no matter the country, the word of God is the same. I'm here to propagate holiness. I'm here to propagate the word of God, the instruction Jesus gave. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, 17, if you destroy this temple, I will destroy you. Praying for the gay people can only be allowed when they come for repentance. Go and check all the people that had the encounter with Jesus. The encounter made differences in their life that they did not go back to their yesteryears. They did not go back to their ugly lifestyle. They opened a new page for their lives. Check the prodigal song, the parable Jesus gave us. When he came back to his senses according to the Bible, he condemned himself. He said, I have offended earth and the heaven. I will go back to my father. He had a repentance in him. What of the woman at the Jacob's well? The confession she made. What of the adulterous woman? 
She did not go back to her old lifestyle. So all these things are things we should know. What of the robber on the cross? This man, the robber who died by the right hand of Jesus Christ. He condemned himself. He repented. So through repentance, when somebody who is a gay comes for prayer, it's not just prayer for blessing because you can never bring blessing of God upon iniquity. Iniquity and divinity is a dangerous combination. You cannot combine the two. So they can come for prayers, for counseling, for deliverance. It is also prayer. But they're talking about blessing them without repentance. He said, no, no. And there is no way Jesus can compromise. He has uncompromised standard from the day one we know him and his lifestyle in the scriptures. So my good friends, there is no way we can compromise this issue. Pope is a servant. Pope is a human being. Pope is he's not above her. There are some popes, according to the church history, that did not make heaven. Of course. Some of them died mysteriously. Anybody who has flesh and the spirit is still a human being. You are battling here on earth. You have not qualified for heaven. As far as you have flesh, you eat and it defecates. Because when you are praying for somebody who is living in sin, you know, people do not know the difference. There is a difference between living in sin and the falling in sin. Somebody who falls in sin is one who did not intend to commit evil. And the fellow commits evil and they had repentance, you know, had a broken heart, had act of contrition in his heart. You know, such a fellow can say, yes, I have wronged God. I have offended men. You know, I did this. I'm wrong. That is the kind of heart God wants. You remember the prayer of the tax collector and the Pharisees. The Pharisees came with pride. He was eulogizing himself and stigmatizing the tax collector. But the task collector confessed in sense of humility, with a profound humility, saying, God, I'm not worthy to be here, forgive me. That's the kind of heart you approach God with when you are diving in iniquity, when you are swimming in iniquities and atrocities. How can somebody be a gay with a shameless boldness? You parade yourself as a gay and you come to the altar of God, asking a man of God to pray for you, to bless you. You will receive what you did not plan to get. Because the resultant effect will be, it, it will be a destructive one. So living in sin and the falling in sin, they are two different things. Living in sin is when one enjoys iniquity and you are proud of doing evil. You are stubborn in sin. That will give birth to the sin against the Holy Spirit. Unforgivable sin. Yes. That is what living in sin results in. But falling in sin is when you plan to do good. Exactly what St. Paul encountered in Romans 7. Go and read it. He said, that what I plan to do, I did not do. But what I did not plan to do, I get myself doing. But thank God for Jesus who delivered me. There are forces that make people to go against the will of God. You need to fortify yourself in case of eventuality. So falling in sin is accidental. But living in sin is that you are proud of doing evil. So if you are among the gay members, my dear, Pope is not the final judge. The final judge will judge the Pope and they judge all the church members. Pope is just an office holder. We have respect for him for holding that office, but he should be careful what he voice out. Imagine Peter that Jesus promised to build the church upon. You are the rock. Upon you I will build my church. Peter opened his mouth and he said something that was pleasant to the ears of men. Oh, no, God forbid you will not die. And Jesus called Peter, you sit and get behind me. Imagine Peter who saw Jesus face to face. Who ate with Jesus and drank with him? And Jesus called him Satan when he was possessed. So any spirit can enter Pope. He's not above being possessed by evil spirits. He's a human being. He sleeps and he wakes up like every other person. So what am I saying, my beloved friends? Let us be very, very careful. Bible says in Hebrews 12 too, keep looking unto Jesus. He did not say you are pastor. He did not say you are reverend. He did not say you are bishop or pope. Keep looking unto Jesus. For he is the author and the finisher of our faith. The same Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Jesus said, Imitate me, for I am meek and the humble. So, my dearest friends in Christ, what am I saying? Let us be very, very careful. These are the end times. The word of God is above every other denominational books. The word of God is above the canon of your local church. The word of God is the constitution. Is a inherent word. It's infallible. The word of God is the canon that drives every Christian. It's an indubitandum. It's impeccable. 
That is the only thing you will hold on to. Not the word of your pastor. Anything your pastor preaches, your pope or your father, everybody, every priest, G.O. preaches, your prophet and whosoever the person may be, evangelist, whatever they tell you, evaluate that in the light of the gospel. Take it to the scriptures. Tell the Holy Spirit to interpret the word, for we have false teachers and the false prophets. Be very, very careful. The days are evil. Share this video. My name is Brother Paul Chibo. Remain blessed. Lots of people, room of joy, the best for